I have been grieved to see not only what is happening in Gaza and in Israel, uh, the war that's there, the devastation, the destruction, but my heart has also been grieved to see how Christians online, uh, you know, uh, Christian commentators talk about this issue because many of them don't talk from a Christian perspective. They talk from a worldly perspective. They talk about the right to self-defense, about the right for a nation to defend itself. That's of this world. That's, that's, that's for this world to do. As Christians, our enemies are not of flesh and blood, but they are principalities and powers. Our kingdom that we belong to is not of this world, but it's the kingdom of Christ. Jesus said, uh, if my kingdom were of this world, my disciples would fight so that he wouldn't be handed over to the Jews. It, our kingdom is not of this world. We serve the Lord Jesus Christ who gave his life for his enemies. When we look at Israel, what is Israel? Israel is a, a nation state that is filled with wickedness, filled with uh, all kinds of uh, antichrist attitudes, uh, all kinds of persecution against believers, uh, all kinds of hatred and enmity towards the living God and towards his son Jesus Christ. When we look at Palestine, when we look at the Palestinians and we look at uh, Hamas, what do we see? We see the same thing. Violence on both sides, wickedness on both sides, worldliness on both sides. We also see our brothers and sisters in Palestine, in Gaza, right now being killed. We, we see people in Israel right now suffering that are followers of Christ, that are following Jesus Christ, our brothers in Christ suffering. But when we see it from politics, when we look at this and, and imagine that Christians are supposed to be not only involved in fighting and war and killing our enemies, our, our enemies of the flesh, but also to, to just thinking in such worldly ways that we say like, oh yeah, but they had a right to defend themselves and they need to fight and yeah, Hamas needs to be obliterated and all these kind of things. This is, this is insane. I saw, I think it was on uh, what G, GBN or CB, oh, CBN. And, and they were talking about that it's time for Hamas to be no longer to exist and that, and that we were behind Israel uh, destroying them. What is this? I mean, this is not Christian. This is, this is of this world. This is wickedness. This is, this is pure evil and hatred. We are not of this world. And we are called to serve Jesus Christ. What that means is that we follow the Lamb wherever He goes. We proclaim the gospel. We overcome by the word of our testimony, by the blood of Jesus Christ, and we are not going to love our lives unto death. So that means we're willing to give testimony to our enemies, whether our en enemies, the worldlings of this world called Israel that don't know Christ, or the worldlings of Hamas that don't know Christ, Either way, they are enemies according to the gospel. But they are loved, both Israel and Hamas, by the Savior of the world who gave his life for all men so that all men would be drawn to him. And so our role as Christians is as priests to pray for the nations, to intercede for them, that they would repent and turn to God. Not that we would support one side and say, oh, this side or that side, or Ukraine or Russia, or, uh, you know, uh, this thing is this, is, this is so frustrating that we have let these strange theologies of the world enter into the church so much that we actually feel we are supposed to take sides in worldly kingdoms. And in fact, people think that it would be wrong not to take Israel's side because they're the people of God. No, people that reject Christ, in 1 John it says that if you do not have the Son, you do not have the Father. So are there believers in Israel? Most definitely. Are there believers in Gaza? Most definitely. And there are brothers in Christ, and I, I pray for them to have strength so that they could proclaim the gospel in these times and be willing to die for their enemies, whether it's Israelis, wicked Israelis, or wicked Hamas, whichever way that they would be willing to proclaim the gospel, that they would uh, have the word of their testimony, the blood of Jesus Christ, and they would not love their lives unto death, and they would most certainly not love their nation unto the point to where they kill others to where they are willing to support a worldly kingdom to fight against men for whom Christ died. This is insanity at the, the max. I mean, why did the Crusades happen? It happened for the stuff like this, that we had to have a special, uh, we had to have the Holy Land that we needed to fight against Muslims and Jews and cleanse it so that we could have it for Christianity. What kind of, what kind of nonsense is that? 
In the same way, what, we're gonna just obliterate Hamas and all the Palestinians around them, you know, for the, for what? For the kingdom of Israel? We're not part of the kingdom of Israel. We're part of the kingdom of Jesus Christ, whose kingdom is not of this world. We do not belong to this world. Our inheritance is in eternity with Christ. And we serve our enemies. We love them. We pray for them. We do good for them. We bless them when they curse us, when they slap us, when they do whatever they do, when they murder us, we love them, we pray for them, we say, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And so some will say, well, yeah, but you gotta be practical, brother. No, I don't have to be practical, you have to be biblical. You have to be of the kingdom and not of this world. And we have to serve Jesus Christ and love our enemies. Can you truly love your enemies while you're looking through a scope ready to blow his brain out? That is not love. Jesus describes what love is there in Luke chapter six. He says, love your enemies, do good to them, pray for them, bless them. Can you love them, pray for them, bless them, do good to them while you're shooting them in the head? It's not possible. You, you say, well, you can't say that because they're God's people. No, those that are in Jesus Christ are the children of God and they are the elect, that is the chosen people of God. Those that are outside of Christ, they are under the wrath of God and they need to repent and they need to trust in Christ and turn to him. Are you of this world? Are you, do you have somehow have two kingdoms to where on the one hand you're serving Jesus Christ in his kingdom of peace, the Prince of Peace, and yet on the other hand you take up a weapon to fight against flesh and blood when we're clearly told that that is not of our, 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 our role, that's not our kingdom? You say, but yeah, but Romans chapter 13 says that the, the nations have the sword, the kings have the sword and they're ministers of God for, for vengeance and for righteousness. Yes, the, the people of this world. Paul was talking about Rome. Paul was talking about Nero, the one that cut his head off. But in Romans chapter 12, he says, vengeance belongs to the Lord. So when your enemy does evil to you, then you give him, you give him water so it becomes a burning coal on him. Do good, overcome evil with good. Well, what is that? That's not practical, Chris. You're gonna get killed. Yes, we're going to get killed, but we have a risen Christ. We have a risen savior. And these people are gonna get killed after killing somebody else, and they're gonna to go to the second death because they have not life in them. Whether they're Hamas or whether they're Israel, whether they are the IDF or whether they are Hamas, it doesn't matter. Whether they are Iran or whether they are Russia, be Christian, my friend. Don't get sucked up into worldly politics, but instead follow Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God that gave himself for his enemies. Remember, you were once his enemy. When he died for you, he didn't come to slaughter you. He didn't come to destroy men's lives. Do you know what manner of spirit of you are, are you of? Are you calling down fire from heaven on the enemies uh, of Israel instead of praying for God to have mercy on their souls? Instead of saying, wait a second, I want to go to Israel. I want to support this war. And you say, what war? The war for souls. The war for the souls of the Palestinians, for the souls of Hamas. You say, well, well we pray for the innocent Palestinians. No, we pray for the guilty Palestinians and the guilty Israelis. And we're willing to give our lives for them. And we say, God, send me for this war, this spiritual war of the kingdom of God, that we would preach the gospel to the lost Israelis and to the lost Palestinians, to the lost Iranians, to the lost Russians, to the lost Americans that are lost in their wickedness. This is what we are called to be. We are sent out as lambs to the slaughter, not out with AK-47s and whatever M-16s and whatever missiles we've got. We are not of this world. My friend, if you are a Christian, you are not an American. You are not a Palestinian. You are not an Israeli. You are a Christian. You are not of this world. You are in this world, but you are not of this world. But if you want to live in this world, then you can perish with this world. If you want to fight with this world, if you want to take up the sword with this world, you can die by the sword with this world. Because Jesus Christ did not come to kill, he came to save. His apostles did not take up swords to fight against the Romans. His apostles did not go around, oh yeah, but Jesus told them to buy a sword and said, yeah, the two of them was enough and they never, and when they cut a, an ear off, he put it back and he says, don't do this. This is not our way. Put it back in the sheath. So you say, well, we're supposed to take sword. Okay, take a sword, but don't use it on anyone. Don't use it on flesh and blood because our Warfare is not with flesh and blood, but with kingdoms and principalities and powers. And when you are under the delusion that you are supposed to support Palestine because Israel has been giving them occupation, or you're supposed to support Israel because they've been attacked by terrorists, you are under the power and the influence of the prince of this world. You are listening to demonic forces that are leading you away from Christ. You, they are causing you to betray the kingdom of Jesus Christ. 
because Jesus said to love your enemies. We serve him. He is our only king. Let the nations fight their wars. Let the nations battle for their kingdoms. They will all perish when the Son of God comes to judge in righteousness. But we should have mercy on them, seeking to win them out of the flames by bringing the gospel to them, the word of our testimony, the, the blood of Jesus Christ, and not willing, or, and, and we, that we don't save our lives, but we give up our lives for our enemies. Do not be duped by this world by the uh, Christian, turn off the news. If you can't watch it objectively and say, this is what the world is fighting over, but you let men who don't know the word of God come and tell you, no, you're supposed to be on Israel's side, and if you're not, you're in sin. If you're not, then you're not on God's side. My friend, be careful. This is an influence of the world. In the Crusades, you would have been on the side for fighting the Jews and the Muslims to get them out of, Palestine, out of, out of the Holy Land so that we could have, have liberated it and had a, a peaceful Christian nation in that place. If you're deceived by this, you would have been deceived by that. If you're willing now to pray that, that uh, Gaza is obliterated and that Hamas no longer exists and that all the men of Hamas die instead of that they are saved, then you would have fought in the Crusades. Don't deceive yourself. Don't imagine that you would have been different. You're under the, the influence of the prince of this age, just like they were. And that's why you can, with a straight face, think that you are serving God by with in your heart taking sides in worldly affairs we can look and we can see look that was a wicked act oh and then the response was wicked knack and the response to that was a wicked act who has done wicked you can watch if you watch and you listen to somebody from the palestinian side give their support or their their reasons why they are the victim in this for all these years it makes complete sense and it's true they have been victimized and if you listen to the Israeli side and listen to all the things that they've suffered by the hands of the Arabs and those that want them dead, it makes sense. It's right. They have suffered. They have been victims in this. But they've also been aggressors, both sides. They're, they are wicked men without Christ willing to fight and kill each other. In defense. In defense. Sorry, we're Christians. We don't fight in defense. We don't fight for anything. We pray and we lay our lives down and we proclaim the gospel. This is what we do. If this is not what you like, if this is not the Christianity that you want, if you say it's impractical, the kingdom of God is impracticable, then just totally betray Christ altogether. At least don't use his name. Don't use his name in, in the, the cause of war, in the cause of violence. Serve Jesus Christ and go there and lay your life down instead of calling other people to go shoot and kill other people. This is, this is a betrayal of the kingdom of Christ. And I have seen men online that I believe are genuine followers of Christ, that love Jesus Christ, deceived by this spirit of this age, and they are being led into betrayal. They are, their loyalties are being cut in the middle. They are supposed to be serving the kingdom of Christ, but then they think because of bad theology, that oh, I'm also supposed to serve the kingdom of Israel, right? I'm also supposed to sign up for the defense of the homeland, right? Wrong, wrong. We have one kingdom, one king. We will serve uh, whatever nation we, lie, uh, we live in. We will serve, we will obey their laws until they tell us to disobey the laws of Jesus Christ. And when they tell us to take up arms and to kill our enemies, they have called us to betrayal and to deny the Lord Jesus Christ as our king. And we will say no. And if they want to put us in prison, if they want to put us to death, then so be it. We will follow Christ. We will not love our lives unto death, but we will serve the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our Lord. Israel is not our home. Palestine is not our home. America is not our home. Russia is not our home. Ukraine is not our home. If you are a Christian, the kingdom of God and where Jesus Christ reigns is your home. Serve him. Do not betray the kingdom and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope this has been helpful to you. And I might as well wish farewell to those that can't accept this. You can't accept that the kingdom of Christ is radical. You can't accept that the kingdom of Christ is different than the kingdoms of the world. That we are not allowed to have uh, mixed loyalties and you are furious to listen to this. You're furious to hear some arrogant guy say such things and such radical, impractical words. And what about this verse and what about that verse? Yeah, what about all the verses 
to tell us to love our enemies. What about all the verses that say, two swords is enough, put your sword back because he who lives by the sword will die by the sword. What about Jesus Christ dying on the cross for his enemies, praying for his enemies, Stephen, all the apostles? What about the early church going to the slaughter? Well, yeah, but later they, you know, they fought. Yeah, they did fought. When they joined the kingdoms of this world, in Constantine's day, when the nations of this world and the church mixed together, yeah, indeed. Indeed, they begin to fight, they begin to persecute. All throughout the Reformation, they were killing and slaughtering people. The Catholics were, the, the Reformers were. They were men of this world, and they stood opposed to the simple message of Jesus Christ, to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Don't be followers of them, but follow those who have followed the Lamb wherever he's gone and been willing to lay their life down for their enemies, to speak the truth to them, the hard truth, that Israel is lost because they have rejected the Son of God. Palestine is lost because they have rejected the Son of God. Tell them that truth, but tell them that there is a God that loves his enemies and didn't come to kill them and destroy them, but he came to save the lost, those that were his enemies, to lay his life down, not only for his friends, but for his enemies. This is the love of God, that Jesus Christ laid his life down for us when we were ungodly and wicked. Go take that truth. Tell that truth to the world. Not this wicked, demonic, worldly system that says, yeah, we need to fight for this side because they've been oppressed by Israel. No, we need to fight for this side because they've been attacked by terrorists. No, we need to fight in the way that Jesus Christ told us to fight, to lay our lives down for our enemies through prayer, through the preaching of the gospel, through genuine love, through willingness to suffer, through willingness to embrace those that others hate. I love Palestinians, not the innocent Palestinians only, but I love Hamas. Are you grieved whenever those that are in Hamas die and go straight to hell? Are you grieved by that? Or do you rejoice in that? Are you going to rejoice whenever bombs fall and kill not only innocents, but that they kill wicked men? Are you going to rejoice? Or are you going to be grieved? Are you going to have the spirit of Christ? Or are you going to have the spirit of this world, which is antichrist? My friend, choose a way. Follow Christ or follow this world. Follow the kingdom of Jesus Christ or follow the kingdoms of this world. Live for the kingdom of Jesus Christ or die with this world and perish apart from him. Jesus Christ's kingdom is a narrow way. It's not a practical way. It's a way of obedience. It's a way of the cross. Follow Jesus Christ, not this world. God bless.